We all love to be part of a winning team, don't we? Or when one of our own wins, shares a great victory. We can go back to a national level of many things the United States has done first, but one of the great things quite a long time ago, we were the first one to land the person on the moon here in our own city, our own Las Vegas Golden Knights have won the Stanley Cup. Our own women's basketball team, the Aces, have won the national title. Bishop Gorman High School has won many national, many state football titles and even ranked nationally. And someday, perhaps in the future, the Raiders will win the Super Bowl and the Las Vegas A's will win the World Series. Wouldn't that be great? So that's what we celebrate today. One of our own has made a great victory, and that is Mary. One of our own, one of our own human race fellow beings. So Jesus promises so many times in his preaching, the kingdom of heaven is like this, the kingdom of God is like this. I will come back and take you with me. Where I am, you also may be. To the thief on the cross next to him. Today you'll be with me in paradise. Jesus talked about an afterlife. He talked about heaven. He talked about eternal reward. But was that just talk or was it real? Well, today we celebrate the fact that Mary was the first to be taken body and soul into heaven. And again, there's no account of this in scripture. Uh, the last account we actually have of Mary is on Pentecost, uh, as we have depicted there in our beautiful tapestry. Mary was with the apostles <coughs> in the upper room when the Holy Spirit came to them 50 days after Jesus himself was taken up into heaven. And so, what happened to Mary the rest of her life? Well, remember on the cross, Jesus said to Mary, as he looked at the youngest apostle John, and said, woman, behold your son. And he said to that apostle John, behold your mother. So tradition tells us that Mary traveled with John, maybe took care of him. If he was the youngest apostle, maybe he needed some, some motherly attention. And as a widowed woman, Joseph had died, her son had gone to heaven, maybe Mary needed the, the strength of a young man to help her out. So the two uh, helped each other out, perhaps. And we know that John the apostle traveled to what is now Turkey, the city of Ephesus. And I've been to Ephesus, and there's a home of Mary there. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. Also, I've been to Israel. There's a beautiful chapel there called the Chapel of the Dormition. Dormition meaning sleeping, where it has a beautiful statue of Mary just lying on a bed on that statue, and then disappeared, gone to heaven. We teach that because of our sins, this body will be corrupt, will turn to ashes. Well, if someone never sinned, as we believe Mary was born immaculate and without sin all her life, that her body would not corrupt and she would be taken body and soul into heaven. So that's the theological background of today's feast. But what's the personal meaning for all of us here? That we are asked to follow the example of Mary. Not necessarily going body and soul into heaven, but I hope that's the case. I believe that's going to be true. We're going to say that in a creed in a few moments. I believe in the resurrection of the body. The example of Mary, perhaps, is even heard in today's gospel. Mary always cared about other people. She put aside her own needs and cared first about those who needed her. So in this situation, Mary had been told by Gabriel that she was to be the mother of the Messiah. In that same conversation, Gabriel said to Mary, and also your relative, an older woman, Elizabeth, has miraculously conceived a child. She's now six months pregnant. So Mary forgot about her own situation, having to tell Joseph she was pregnant, having to make quick arrangements to get married or whatever. She raced down a 90-mile trip from Nazareth to Ein Kerem, the hometown of Zechariah, Elizabeth, and John the Baptist, and she helped Elizabeth out. The very last line of the gospel said she stayed about three months. Well, if Elizabeth was six months pregnant and Mary stayed there three months, she was probably there for the birth of John the Baptist, maybe even acted as midwife. Mary knew that this older woman perhaps might have a difficult pregnancy, difficult delivery. So she says, I'll go down and help you out. Later on, Mary and Jesus and the apostles are at a wedding. 
The couple ran out of wine. Mary felt sorry for this couple. They'd be embarrassed. Just a social embarrassment, nothing huge. But she thought, if anyone can help out, I'll ask Jesus to do something. And there he performed his first miracle, changing water into wine. Over and over again, Mary brings her relatives and friends to wherever Jesus is preaching and says, listen to him. And she was there at the foot of the cross. Mary was a helper. Mary was a comforter. Mary was a friend. Mary was a companion. We are asked to imitate her. All of us know people in need. All of us know people who, who could lend, to whom we could lend a helping hand. All of us know people who need to cry on our shoulder. All of us know people who just simply need us to listen to them. Imitate Mary. Be one who is there for others. And also, don't forget to thank God. When greeted by Elizabeth, Elizabeth said, Blessed are you among women. What a greeting that was. Now, had Mary been proud Mary, <laughs> you know, she would have said, Yeah, I am the best woman that's ever been made, you know. She said, No, I'm a lowly servant. The Almighty has done great things for me. Praise God. Mary never took compliments too seriously. She never thought she was better than anyone else. She just said, God has done good things to me, great things to me. I'm really blessed. Praise God. May we do the same. Follow Mary's example of helping others in the spirit of humility and love. Hail Mary.